Hey guys, AI 4x4 here, and today we're doing a brake change on a 2007 Grand Vitara. Alright, so I'm recording this after like that, as you can see. I'm behind my car. Have you seen the video putting a brake change for the 2007? Um, as far as I'm aware, 2006-2012 should, don't quote me, should be the same uh, kind of system. Uh, it wasn't hard, uh, but it wasn't easy. Uh, it took a lot of DIY, and um, I shouldn't promote DIY, um, but I also think that I should promote you know, something for people who don't have enough money to buy, in our case, um, a caliper stretcher, which is what we needed. We needed something to push the brake, uh, push the drum back to put our new pads in. Um, we did it really sketchy, uh, so your discretion is, is advised. I don't know, I shouldn't be saying that for a DIY or for a brake changing video, but brake changing is something that's very important. Uh, if you can avoid it, try and get someone else to do it. Uh, probably a professional, um, just because if they fail, you know, it could be life or death, not only for you, but for someone else. Um, rear brakes are a lot harder to do. They have a drum, they have electronics, they have springs. Front brakes are not too hard to do. Uh, as you may see, we may look really difficult, but as you may see, uh, it's just, you know, taking the pads out. But again, um, well, I didn't have the money nor the patience to let someone else do it for me. Uh, I do have a really good mechanic. Um, so, you know, it's not against him, love my mechanic. It's just something that I knew that I could do myself, um, and my dad, of course. So, we did do it, um, and video. Yeah. Single we did, I uh, made sure the handbrake was on. Airbrake's very vital, because that just holds the back tyres in place, sort of. You also have to truck your car. We put bricks behind uh, the front tyre we weren't working on and the rear tyres. The car's still on the ground, lowered. Make sure you undo the lug nuts on the tyre that you're going to be working on or that you want to work on, just so they're not, well, the wheel doesn't spin when it goes up. So that's what we did here. I didn't show it very much, but we took the, we loosened the lug nuts off and then proceeded to jack it up. And then we can take them off fully, just so, because otherwise the tyre would have just spun around. No one wants to play with that, so. Now something you, you should get in the habit of doing is putting your spare tyre underneath the car when you're jacking it up, especially if you're working out of the car or even on the brakes or the, you know, the rotors. What we did actually is we used the tyre that we took off and we put it underneath the car next to where we were. You can't really see it, but it is in frame towards, you know, the end of the videos. But we did that just because... You know, even though my car is quite tall, it's taller than what my spare tire would be, or what my current tire is, like the width. It's still a safety, you know, mechanism because the car will fall, maybe on you. So if you have a tire under there, you know, you're not gonna get crush, you get hurt, but you won't die. So it's always a good thing. Now next up, we struggled to get the calipers. Oh, I don't have calipers. I have a bracket, a brake bracket. Struggled to get my brake bracket to let go of the brake pads because I didn't really YouTube it and my dad doesn't oh, this one. it was like it was a guessing game right um because he doesn't work on brakes anyway so this is a guessing game for the both of us see there's a bolt on top which is what I'm un unscrewing that bolt needs to come out fully and then I go to the bottom and I undo that bolt fully as well which is when the caliper or the brake kind of falls off and my dad and I catch it because there's nothing now holding it there um, what we also did was put the lug nuts on the rotors because the rotors are also moving. So for them to not do that, we just put the lug nuts back on. What we did here is we took the brakes off. Um, as you can see by my grumbling, it was quite heavy. What I did here was I popped out the brake pads um, and then we just collected them. The new ones that I got, they're probably four-wheel drive ones, so they're a lot thicker than what they should be which is where our first dilemma was because we couldn't understand how to get them back in into the, you know, the brake bracket. This was a lot of fumbling around and it fumbled around for hours, so yeah. What we decided, which is what you see like, sometimes in some DIY it, videos of brake changes, up, like, is to to put two screwdrivers in between the pads like, to kind of push the drum back. Uh, it didn't push the drum back. 
but I did slightly damage the front pads. That's all right. You tried. Don't do that. So you need to do the pad is kind of a, a bean shape, uh, and so is the bracket. So you got to put the the pad in the same kind of grooves in the clips as well. Don't lose the clips. Yes, that's what we did here. Uh, but I'll explain more when we get to it because we realize what we're doing wrong and how to fix it later on. What I didn't say before starting this video, make sure, preferably when your car is on the ground, is take your brake fluid cap off. So this stops the pressure build up inside your brake calipers or your brake pads. And you jump your brakes. It stops the pressure on your brakes. Uh, so then, when you are pushing the drum backwards like we are doing now, the brake won't go back, it'll keep the pressure, which is what happens when you don't take the cap off. Take the cap off, it'll go back. You will see brake fluid start pouring out of the chamber, but that's all right. It's just brake fluid, it'll be fine. Not for your paint, don't get any paint in within the paint, any clothes. But make sure you do that before you start putting your pads on. Now I wanted to leave this in here just to show you that people do struggle doing this. It's not an incredibly easy job, but if you have the right tools, which we didn't, so just putting that there. So what I didn't record is how we actually got the uh, the drum to go back. Uh, I didn't record that just because I thought, oh, that's really sketchy. I don't really want to promote that, but I should have promoted that. What we did was um, we pushed the drum back with two screws. We put a screw and a nut between the drum and the brake pad and we just kind of twisted it so it kind of stretched the, pad, uh, the drum backwards between the pads. So that screw here and a nut here and we kind of wound it up so the drum would push backwards. It worked very efficiently because we were able to put the two pads in um, and we were able to put them up so but there is proper tools that you should be purchasing for that which is like a stretch, it's like a vice, oh, it's like a, yeah, it's like a vice, but it does the opposite and clamp, it pushes. Um, so that's what you need to be getting to be able to do that. I wouldn't recommend doing the screw away because it would have really hurt if that flung off and hurt us. And it could have also really damaged my drum or my pads. So there's proper tools you can get. Make sure you get proper tools. <laughs> it's now night time. Now it is time to take the tire out from underneath the car and put the jack down. What I did here was I actually test drive it. There's not much difference, so I didn't even bother recording it. Uh, but I did test drive it just to make sure there wasn't any slack on the left, which is really hard to tell if you've only done one time. But, you know, test for dead. Now this wasn't so much as a DIY how to change a brake thing. This is more so a learning experience for me. Um, so if you didn't learn anything, that's fine. <laughs> You know, there's more videos on how to do it. I didn't really want to record how to do something that I didn't really know. It was a learning curve for me. So I just kind of explained how I did it and what I did and what I did wrong. I won't need to do another brake pad change for at least another six months, minimum. Um, so, I mean, that'd be good. But yeah, another six months minimum. So, hopefully, um, I don't have to do it again because it's quite frustrating. But next up is rear brakes. I'm not doing the rear brakes. Take my advice. Make a mechanic do it. <laughs> 